Good morning. Well, that was really awesome worship. And I'm, I know that all the songs are picked according to the theme of the sermon. So I'm very much looking forward to the sermon. But the last three sermons have highlighted, in contrast, how painfully human we are and how we most naturally move away from God. Two weeks ago, Fred Rolfe spoke to us about the prophet Jeremiah, who was warning the nation of Israel that they were moving away from God and that they were refusing God's instruction. This is certainly a dangerous place to be, both moving away from God and then not listening to him as he calls us back to himself and gives us the instruction that we need. In his sermon about David and Goliath, Brando pointed out that a very effective way that Satan uses to undermine and destroy our shalom is by luring us into what is known as friendly fire. This is where people on the same team get confused and start fighting each other. Satan gets us distracted into thinking that he is not the real enemy, but that our friends are, and our loved ones, and other people around us. And then just like the Philistines, in their confusion, they started attacking each other. We can easily get led into this same kind of behavior. Sometimes this can be triggered by our fears, our anxieties, or insecurities. We may feel threatened by people near us, instead of realizing that we're on the same team. And that's what happened when King Saul, what, with King Saul, as we heard in PJ's sermon last week. After David had freed Israel from the plague of Goliath and the Philistines, Saul brought David right into his own household, gave him his own daughter to marry, and entrusted him with various responsibilities. But then came the day when they returned home together from a successful battle against the Philistines, and the young women were singing, Saul has killed his thousands, but David his ten thousands. And this sent a seed of hatred zinging into Saul's heart, which he fed and nurtured, and it drove him crazy. Saul's downward spiral into despair and destruction came from the choices he made when he felt jealous and insecure. His choices about what to think about, who to trust, and how to treat David. Here's the thing. We all have opportunities to compare ourselves to others. There's always someone with more friends, more opportunities in the field that we would like to have opportunities in, more apparent success or happiness. It doesn't take more than a few minutes on social media to remind ourselves of these things. And perhaps it's even more painful when it's people who are close to us, who are succeeding in ways that we wish we could. We all have reasons to feel jealous or insecure. The question isn't whether we will have this temptation. The question is how we will respond. PJ gave us six choices we can make when we're feeling these temptations. So one, we can become aware of our own heart. We can notice what we're valuing, what makes us feel jealous, and where we're turning for comfort. Two, we can ask God to show us our blind spots so that we won't be living in denial of our envy and resentment. Number three, we can develop a mindset of abundance instead of scarcity. God has plenty of blessings to go around for all of us, and he deeply cherishes and values each one of us. Number four, we can pray for blessing on the person we're feeling jealous of and publicly praise and celebrate them. Remember, we're on the same team as the rest of God's followers. And when someone else wins, we all win. Number five, we can ask God to give us a heart for him and for his glory. Really, this has to do with taking our eyes off of ourselves and each other and lifting our eyes our gaze to God. When David freed Israel from Goliath and the Philistines, he didn't take credit for himself. He gave the glory to God and he thanked God for his deliverance. And that's what Saul could have done too. He could have lifted his eyes to God and thanked him for providing deliverance for all of Israel through David. Psalm 104, 105, 4 says, look to the Lord and his strength, seek his face always. And number six, we can remember and think about the fact that we are completely and unconditionally loved by God. Psalm 106 is the sad story of the downward spiral of Israel as they took their eyes off of God, they forgot his love, they forgot what he had done for them in the past, and they went their own way. A growth group question from two weeks ago was this. Read 1 John 4, 16 to 19, and answer this question. How can understanding God's love drive out fear, and we could add to this resentment and jealousy as well, and change the way that we treat others. Verse 16 in that passage says, So we know and rely on the love God has for us. We know it and we rely on it. 
Here's the last verse of Psalm 107. Whoever is wise, let them heed these things and consider or ponder the great love of the Lord. We don't need to turn on each other in friendly fire, and we don't need to live in the misery of smoldering resentment and jealousy. We can rely on Jesus' love and join him in restoring shalom in the sphere where we live and among the people that we interact with.